Hey y'all, today on the farm we're going to swap up a little bit. I've been running red equipment lately. Y'all seen those combines and red tractors rolling around out here, but you know I like to keep things diverse and ever changing. So we're going to go back to the green equipment and start getting rid of those corn stalks. On this channel, y'all have seen me run John Deere, Case, Massey Ferguson, and New Holland tractors. You're going to have to roll way back in there to find that New Holland one, but it's it's there. I like diversity. I like showing y'all different things, comparing how this manufacturer does it versus that manufacturer so that uh, you can see all the options out there. Uh, some tractors are, are better at some things than other manufacturers are, but they all have their advantages and they all have their disadvantages. What I'm going to be doing today is disking this corn field. So we've harvested our corn out here and you'll notice a few kernels here and there on the ground the corn was pretty dry when we got out here to harvest it and so we would get some shelling at the head so when the, the head would impact the stalks here some of the kernels would fall off on the ground we'll get some shelling at the head and so there's some kernels scattered across the field there's also some weeds some little uh morning glory here's a, a small flower morning glory right here right here we don't want morning glories out here seeding out that's that's bad news got a few coffee weeds up here and so we got to get rid of these weeds and we need to incorporate all of this corn stubble get this stuff built into the soil so laying on the top of the soil we want to incorporate in soil part of the soil now i can already hear those no-till enthusiasts screaming no don't don't uh don't disc that corn let this stuff lay here that is an option in some cases but you see this weeds coming up if i let these weeds seed out we're gonna have massive weed issues which means more herbicides the easiest way to get rid of these weeds is to disc them that way I, I spend less chemicals if i if i have to spray them i still have to make a trip over the field that's field burning but we put out if you no-till you use more herbicides there's no such thing as no till and no spray and that's a fantasy so to get rid of these weeds you either have to till them or you got to use bad chemicals you kind of weigh out your options there the other issue is this is red clay and the next crop is peanuts there's also no such thing as no-till peanuts i scouted crops when i was in college and high school and I worked for a farmer over in Statesboro, Georgia that attempted no-till peanuts. His yield, first, he was not on red clay. He was on a, a light coastal plain, so he was able to come closer to getting them all out of the ground. But his yield was a small fraction of what we yield on this red dirt. We can make the peanuts on this red dirt, but you have to bottom plow to get them out. And if you don't want nematodes to touch your slam off, you need to bottom plow your land. So I think some of y'all call it mold board plowing, but peanuts have to be plowed. You have to get rid of this litter. You gotta flip that dirt over. foot Krauss disc with this John Deere 8530 today. You'll notice there is no drag on this hair. This is a circumstance where you would not want a drag. There's a lot of corn debris, a lot of stubble, a lot, lot, lot of stuff laying out here on top of the ground. And if you had a drag on the hair, that stuff would get caught on the drag and it would leave it uneven behind it. It would, it would drag on the drag and it would just cause a royal mess. So in situations like this, when you're trying to incorporate uh, corn stubble or incorporate chopped cotton stalks or something like that, you don't want a drag on your disc. You want to operate it without a drag. Now in the land prep time of year, when we get ready to seed the ground, get ready to plant, you would run a drag then because you would presumably already have the land uh, disced or plowed already. And so it would be clean, open ground and you would run a disc with a drag to just level it off smooth as silk. This 
is another reason that we're out here disking this field. This is an irrigation rut. This is where the irrigation ran all year. And so the irrigation, while it's applying moisture, it's also walking out here, which creates a rut where its tires are traveling in this red clay. And then when it rains, water falls in that rut and runs down it and it gets deeper and deeper. So we have a, a trench here and we're gonna come across here with the disc and we're gonna cover this trench up get this organic material incorporated into it and get that smooth back out. If we don't address that, the ditch will get deeper all winter. As we move into the winter, the late fall and the winter is when we get most of our rain. And if we have irrigation ruts out here, when the heavy rain part of the year begins, that rut will turn into a deep ditch or ravine. We don't want that. We want to address all erosion issues before the rain starts falling so that we don't run into serious problems. So this is what it looks like behind me. We have all this corn stubble, old stalks and cobs, a little bit of Texas panicum, some coffee weed. And where we're running at, you still see the corn stubble a little bit, not nearly as much. And you don't see any weeds. We're doing away with all the weeds, killing them so they don't seed out, don't create even more weeds and more issues. But this here, the part that we're disking, where we're gonna disc most of this field, we're gonna let it sit here throughout peanut season and gather rains on it. It's gonna rain and rain and this uh, incorporated material is gonna to begin to rot and decompose in the soil. And then it'll be ready for bottom plowing. As I mentioned, we are gonna leave one area, one portion of the field undisked for now because it is dove season in South Georgia. Dove season come in the, I think September 1st in, in South Georgia and so we're disking up. I'm disking up most of this cornfield. My brother-in-law is disking up the cornfield across the street. And so there's less and less harvested cornfields around, less acreage of spread out corn kernels, which means the doves will congregate. And so we're gonna to try to make them congregate in a smaller portion of this field. This field's too big to have a dove. 160 acres out here, it would take 100 men to hunt this field, but we're gonna to try to focus them into one small portion of the field where we're close to water does like to go to go to a pond and water in the evening and we still have untilled corn ground so they have the food source they need and maybe maybe we'll have a successful dove hunt in a couple of weeks for those of y'all who are unfamiliar with dove hunting or or didn't know that we do a lot of dove hunting on the farm i have a video if you scroll way back way back to the beginning roll back 220, 230 videos ago, you'll see us shooting doves out here with 410s. I'm only running about five and a half out here. This tractor will pull this disc way faster than that, but you don't want to pull it faster than that. If you pull a disc too fast, it'll hump up your field. So you'll be throwing too much dirt to the middle or be throwing too much dirt to the outside, depending on how you got it set and whether you're going too fast or too slow. You got to have your hair setting matched to your ground speed so you don't hump up the field. Like I said, if you do it incorrectly, the field will look like waves and it will take years and years to fix that. So you have to match your ground speed to your hair setting I have found that about five and a half to 5.7 is pretty optimal for me for disking with the equipment we have. It does about the best job at that speed. If you notice in the video, a lot of times I'm looking back, I'm always looking back. And what I'm doing is I'm checking these discs to see if there's any wobble in them. When they spin, they want, they want to spin true. You don't want them to spin and have a little wobble in them. And what I just saw wasn't a wobble, but it didn't look like this said this was spinning quite as fast as they should. They weren't wobbling any, but as they spun, I could tell they weren't going as fast as they should. See what, what has happened 
is they have gotten loose. You can check everything in the morning, but just because you check it before you start it don't mean it's going to be right all day. You have to keep staring at this, watching it like a hawk, because things can change, things can, something can break, something can get loose, and if you keep running it, you'll tear up a lot more stuff. So I want this game to do like this. When you turn one disc, they all turn with it. So we're going to have to pick this up, travel to the end of the field, take this pin out, tighten up this giant nut right here, and see if we can get that play out. We don't want, that's no good right there. We don't want that. I got him tightened back up now. One thing that could cause that to happen sometimes is if you turn with your hair down, it will put tension on them discs, and it'll make them work their way loose. If you turn really sharp, you can mess up all of them. But if you just turn a little bit here and there throughout the day, it's the same thing as turning real sharp one time. So if you're not driving really straight with your hair, you will eventually port those discs loose. It's always important to drive dead straight when those discs are in the ground. pretty hard out of y'all these bad thunder clouds have moved in lightning's popping i think the lord's getting ready to bless us with a rain and we need it too but i'm gonna keep on rolling been rolling all day out here and i'm gonna keep on to this ground gets wet or we get done i know I ain't gonna get done so i reckon i'm gonna keep on rolling to the ground gets too wet to run i thank all of y'all for watching i hope to see you next time